Don't hurt yourself. Hmm? Don't hurt yourself. No pictures, please. Yeah? No. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Well, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to what we call Monday. That's what we call it? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Yeah, it's Monday. You know what that means, though? That means tonight at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time over on YouTube. Oh, there won't be anything going on, but on Facebook, on Facebook, we'll have, uh, we'll have the Q&A show. So make sure to head over there tonight onto the Facebooks, the books that are made of faces. And if you don't catch it live and don't, you know, just watch the rebroadcast tomorrow over on YouTube. There you go. There you go. Uh, good afternoon, guys. How was, the, how was the weekend, or shall we call it the day off? My day off was good. Yeah? Yeah, I enjoyed my day off. Yeah? yeah? All right. What are you working on? Right now, I'm working on a door panel of the Toyota Avalon. Yes. yes. Another Avalon. Toyota Avalon. This is the second one. Yeah. Okay. So this is the back door. What's going on with the back door? This is the back door. Correct. Are we uh, bypassing? No speakers in the back door, except for the tweeter. Are we bypassing that? We gonna bypass that thing. Did you bypass the other one, or did you forget? Um, no, I bypassed that with. With the adapter. With the, the adapter. focal adapter. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Like... Did did a kicker CX five channel and a Chevy Express van today? Boy, does that amp get hot, and boy, does those trucks suck. Which one? Chevy Express van. Yeah, they suck. Well, van, anything with the van in the title is like you're going to have to take apart way too much stuff and there's nowhere to run wires. It's like any other car. No, no, vans suck. You know vans suck. My heart goes out to you. Um, so as Fernando has led on, we're working on a Avalon. Oh, hold on, what's this say? Any idea why I can't get decent sensor image with the Kenwood DSP? No. No, you should should be able to unless you're running coaxles. Are you running coaxles? What are you running? Yeah. Yeah, because you know it depends on the speakers you're running, but um, coaxles would cause that. Uh, otherwise, no, should should be fine. Um, and that'd be coaxles down and low in the door where the mid base is. Otherwise, you could try play, play, playing. So easiest thing to do: reset the whole unit back to default. Um, go in to the Kenwood settings, fade it to the front first, fade it to the front, put it on the driver's front speaker, or driver's position, I'm sorry, driver front position, go into the level and the time alignment, set them all back to zero. So set everything back to zero. Then start playing polarity pop tracks, like from my disc or somewhere else. We have it on DNF tool drawer, you can download it. Um, and start moving out either the driver's side or the passenger side. Um, I, th I think on that one it is the driver's side because I think that one is normal whereas the Pioneers are backwards. Anyway, start moving that one out and what you should eventually notice is that the pop sound, the pop, pop, pop should start to move into the center uh, as it does. Um, and then play some music and see what that does for you. See if that helps you out. Uh, you can also do that with it just the way it's set up now. Um, it just It's easier with the less you have to play with if you've kind of never done it before. Uh, pulled to me a while back to talk to you, and I will be in the area on the 22nd. Okay. All right, we'll be here. Uh, Chevy Astro vans seem to be the demo vehicle. Oh, yeah, right? Yeah, the Astro vans. Yeah, Safaris. Yeah, those were fun. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at what we got going on here. What's the best stuff to bond ABS plastic? Um, Screws. I'm not going to lie, screws. We use screws. That's that's pretty much it. We don't really, we don't really do any gluing, uh, but it's ABS, so any form of ABS glue will work. Yeah. Um, but, Unless you you like building a yeah, don't you see it? Like I'm you know, uh, but there is glue out there for it. We just we don't ever glue any of it together because it's yeah. What's going in the Avalon? Exactly. Let's get to the Avalon. The Avalon's getting a lot of stuff. So uh, first thing first, if you notice underneath the hood here, uh, what we're working on is this front camera right here. 
so we have this mounted in place, tucked up in, it's from Texas, so they have to have a front, front license plate. That's what's sitting on the ground. Um, so we're using that to make our mount for the camera, which is kind of cool. So we don't have to cut up the grill or anything, but it tucked up in there really nice. Uh, this is the second go around at it. The first one Fernando didn't like, so we went back to the drawing board and came up with plan B. So that is the Kenwood high res camera. So that's the 740. CMOS 740 HD. So that's going in the front. He's also getting the dash cam because he's going with this radio right here. And the reason why this radio is actually sitting out is because they're HD cameras, which means there's not a handheld cool viewer. Our, our camera tester won't work with HD cameras. They, they don't speak the same language. So we had to hook the radio up no, so we could... Español, let me go. Exactly. <laughs> so we had to hook the camera up to our screen. So uh, pro tip of the day, if you don't have a camera tester, you can always use your radio as a camera tester. Um, in this case, we're just using it to line these up. We've also, in the back here, uh, take out, we took out, take out, we took out the factory camera. So this is, this was where the factory camera was here. Uh, we had to make the hole a little bit bigger, remake the mount. Um, basically you have to take the whole back of the car apart to get to it. But this gave us the ability to mount the HD camera into the factory location, uh, onto the factory mount. So we reworked it to get it to fit in there. So that tucks up in there, it looks just like the, the factory does. Uh, Fernando's working on this door. Actually, he's working on the rear doors, as you saw. He's, there's no speakers going in these. We're just making them making them not so loud because it's Toyota. Kind of sucks. Uh, but he's got a K2 mid base going into the front door. Full ground zero uh, package. Uh, full ground zero front. Um, on this, we're just soundproofing this outer skin here and the door panel itself. There's nothing that needs to go into the middle area because there's no nothing getting mounted to it, so we don't have to worry about making it rigid or anything like that. Um, hold on, let's go back to this door. So this, this all done. We made a, um, a one-inch thick mount for the K2. So this is a half-inch back with another half-inch spacer here, fast string around it. Um, so this will go right into where the uh, the factory seven inch was if you caught the avalon video same basic idea here a little bit stiffer mount than we went with in that one because we're going with k2s so this is one inch thick of mounting so this is a super thick mount to handle this tons of power that's going to go up to this now for the speakers and the dash we're not doing k2 tweeters which is what you would think yeah the phoenix gold are nice um up in the dash here you can see this little gold spot and come in in the inside. Uh, this is just sitting here for right now because I had to make them out this morning. This is the Illusion Audio three and a half coaxial, and it's biampable. So what you have is, and it's true biamp, comes with a big passive crossover network to run it. And this is what we're doing. So we're actually doing a three-way set in this car because this is a tweeter and a mid-range all in one. So this is getting a, a three-way set. And this is, of course, quarter inch acrylic. We made this mount. And the cool thing about this is, as you'll notice, it's back mounted. It doesn't come in through the front, it comes in through the back. What that does is this allows us to space this speaker down far enough in. So when we go to put the factory grill back on, which is the whole top of the dash, this doesn't affect, it doesn't stick up into that. So our speaker goes down nice and flush inside of there. So that was, uh, getting that done this morning along with those speaker brackets working on the cameras Fernando's been working on the sound treatment so here is the factory speaker here as you can see it's really only about a quarter inch thick uh, they put this piece of foam on here but it, it, the way it's designed I didn't want our speaker because this is a smaller smaller thing and it's it's really kind of crappy the way they design this but I wanted to make sure our speaker doesn't get in the way and like doesn't get crushed or anything like that. So that's why we went with that. Here's the passive crossovers for it. Uh, this whole system is gonna get powered by two audio control amps. So we have a D61200 to power uh, the front and rears. And then we have a 1500.1 that's gonna power two Q-class 12 inch subs in the back 
along with an epicenter, of course, because we want maximum crazy bass. Uh, Focal K2s are going in the rear deck. We haven't got to those yet. Um, really haven't done anything with the radio other than unbox it and use it to power up all the cameras just to make sure that they work. Uh, and the front door is over here. Um, if you remember from the Morel, we put the Morel logo up here because it was small and square. This is rounded. Fernando opted to put it down here because there's this line in the door right here and there's a nice flat area in the grill. And he's like, I like it right there. And I was like, okay. So there's where the Focal grill is going on, the, or the Focal logo is going on that door. Um, and that's it. That's as far as we've gotten on that. That's pretty much all the equipment that's going to go. Are those illusions going passive? They are going to go passive. Um, we just didn't have enough channels. Uh, those are high dollar. This is uh, for personal use. It is 100% for personal use. It's just, it's an Avalon. I mean, who, who wouldn't do an Avalon as anything other than personal use? Uh, do I measure the distance to the speaker from the mid bass or the tweeter? Uh, you're going to go to the mid bass and you're going to go to this point on the mid bass. So a lot of people get confused and they go to the grill. You want to come right to here. So you want to come to the dust cap. Uh, so if your door panel goes into it, you kind of got to guess how far in the speaker is, or you have to, so like if all your door panels are all three inches off, that's fine. It's okay. Uh, but if these are like three inches off and those are two inches or an inch off and that's two inches in the back, well, then you want to make sure you add in that extra distance uh, so that it, um, to get that time alignment right on point. Uh, it's hard to do. Uh, but that's why once you get it done, if it's off a little bit, moving left or right an inch or two really sometimes can make a big difference. Uh, what causes a speaker to cre cre creak? Crack? Um, age, power, distortion. Um, yeah, that's about it. Uh, what's up? Looking to hit 115 degrees next week in Arizona. Kind of missing the Florida weather now. I bet. 115, screw that. Looks clean as always. Good job. Hey, thanks. Uh, what's a good upgrade for Tempo Ultra Soft Dome? Is Virtus enough or should I go hybrid? Also, how would you describe the SQ benefit? I would go up to the hybrid personally. Um, you're going to get a tweeter that is capable of playing much lower in frequency response. Uh, almost, dude, down low, way down low, uh, which will raise the sound stage and almost make it act like a mid range or a middler, <laughs> as it were. Um, so yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely worth it for the SQ side of it. Uh, what's a good budget SQ setup? Um, you know, we, we've talked about the morale. Maxim, Maximus. Maximus with the US at the end. Um, those are ex exceptional speakers. Um, it really comes down to you, your budget, and what you're trying to do. There are plenty of awesome speakers out there at a reasonable price. Um, I would even, you know, SQ. What is your version of SQ? Who's going to be driving? It's a daily driver. Are you going to compete? You're just looking to have fun? You just want nice sound? Do you want a dynamic? Do you not want a dynamic? Um, you know, everyone, all these companies now make. Uh, not gonna say entry level, but affordable versions of their speakers that sound really good. Um, do y'all still have the sound deadening hanging on the garage door? Actually, yes, um, we do. Hold on, I'll show you. Uh, so back here on the back door, we have that super thick stuff that those guys gave us. Um, we thought this would fall off for sure, but. All right, sorry about that. We lost connection there for a minute. Uh, but anyways, that was the stuff on the back door. None of it's peeled off. It's all pretty awesome. Uh, are the rear door speakers in the Avalon OEM and will the deadener help the OEM as well? So the rear door speaker in the Avalon is just this little mid-range right here. It's not going to do anything, meaning we're not retaining this. This is going bye-bye. We're just looping past it. Um, the reason for that is where this is positioned in the car, let me come over here to this guy. This door is already back on. Uh, it sits right here, which is right here next to this. So I'm not putting $700 speakers three feet away from him to put something like right here that is totally gonna screw that up. So these are great if, if you're worried about the guy sitting right here, but we're not. We're not worried about the kids in the back seat. They're gonna have the six and a halfs back here, so they'll be able to hear all their little hoo-hoo, jingle jingle, you know, uh, uh, baby shark, whatever that's called, play. 
Um, and this isn't gonna distract from him, the driver. Now, if you're going for an overall like crazy loud system where it's just like, I just want it loud. Well, then that's a different story. Then yeah, put them in and who cares? Uh, zero gauge through the firewall on a Mustang. Any suggestions? Thanks. Do we drill a hole on that one? Where? On the Mustang? Or do we go? The Mustang? Yeah. Yeah. Drill a hole? Yeah, yeah. Is Behind it the battery, you gotta remove the battery. Oh, you gotta remove the battery. That's right. Remove the battery. Remove the um. The tray. The tray. It's it's holding the battery. Remove and then it's, it. It's... And next to the um. Main wiring harness. No, no. Next to the uh, the fan. Oh, well, I mean. The air vent. The thingy. air vent. Yeah, exactly. That's what I said. Yes. Next to there, you can drill a hole there. There you go. Make sure you seal it. Yep. Yes. Oh, no, no doubt. So pull pull the battery. Mm -hmm. Pull the box. Mm -hmm. Big hole underneath there, go to town. Yep. Okay. Uh, during tuning, what's the best strategy for uh, addressing nulls when combining left and right mids? Ooh, that's a tough one. It depends. You gotta kinda figure out what's going on and why you're getting a null. And then again, how important the null is. I mean, where is it affecting, is it hurting the music and is it helping the music? Um, so one of the charts that we have at, is a, right here from Sweetwater. And what this is, is this is a sound chart. So across the bottom here, it tells us the frequencies. And then across, as you can see here, it tells us what instruments are gonna play on those frequencies. So exa for example, there's a, sh here's important, here's important, might not be as important as you're thinking. So um, something like this kind of helps. So depending on where the null is, you have to figure out how to address it. Now, if you do have an all, then, you know, you might have to check crossover points. Sometimes you might have to move the seats around in the car, just slide them back and forth, see if that's what's causing it. And then if it's something like major, maybe it's tough, man. It's yeah, it just good luck. <laughs> yeah. Pray. Um, uh, D13 tempo, okay, D51300 tempos, up front, maximos and rear, all passive currently. Should I, should I, the Rockford Mini 2 channel on, good add for mid bass to go active. It's a new Accord. Um, or if you want to keep it all audio control, you could check out the ACM 2.300, and then you could use that, yes, you could use, I would personally do the ACM 2.300, Put that on the mid base in the front door. You could use the channel output on the D51300 uh, as a, you know, because it's got a two channel output to do something like that so that you can go full active front if you wanted to. Or, or. No, the ACM is still, I think that's more power. Yeah, no, you're good. Yeah, I just do the ACM. Uh, Dean finally got my 16.6 Ti3. Ooh. I've got questions. Can I join for a quick second? Probably not, because we're actually gonna end this because we gotta get I gotta get back to work. Fernando's like, dude, you know, Fernando, a bunch of Spanish. Um all right. Uh can the illusions fit in the dash for 2016? Mmm. Maybe. Maybe not. It's it's a tough one. It's a big size. It's exactly three and a half inches around. So if you have three and a half inches of circumference, then Go for it. What's up, Fro? You good? Yes, okay. So day two of the Toyota Avalon is going along splendidly. Are all the doors done? All the doors are done. All the doors are done. So we have that door in. That was the last door. Uh, you just finished the rear deck? Finished the rear deck. Let's take a look at the rear deck. So we have some K2. Uh, mounted in the rear deck, coaxles with a custom mount because they don't make a bracket for this. So every bracket in here had to be made from El Scratcho. Uh, there you go. Uh, the fast rings still need to go on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kind of here. Yeah, so you can grab that, get those put in. Uh, so let's talk about what's happening in the trunk while he's getting the fast rings in. This box here, the Q-Class L7, is going into here. Yeah. Um, so it, it goes back about to, you know, to this area here. It won't go all the way. So we have two places to mount our amplifiers. Obviously, we could go up here like we did in the last one. However, what we figured out is that the distance between this speaker and that speaker is not wide enough to fit both of the amplifiers. You need about 24 inches to do that. 
So that left this space here or trying to shoehorn both the amplifiers up underneath those seats, which there's not a lot of room underneath the seats. So if you'll notice, there's a crease right here, that, that crease, that, that little crease is how where this, this lifts up. Um, and that's about the space we have between here and here that's no man's land, meaning once the box goes in, there's no room, it's not doing anything. These seats don't fold down, it just has this permanent hole. So that led us to think, mm -hmm. uh, um, where are we going to put the amplifiers? What could we possibly do to do to, you know, where could they go? On top, on top of the car. On top of the car, it's a good thought. American base in the house. Um, also, today is we, we just, the wire rulers are, if you're waiting for a blue or green and they're out of, they're, I don't know if they're out of stock or not, I just know we ordered a bunch more. So here's the blues, there's the greens. This thing has been running for the past two days, getting more wire rulers made. So thank you guys for ordering the wire rulers. Uh, Mobile Solutions is the place you can get them. Uh, green, we, we had five colors originally, we've narrowed it down to two blue and green you guys both everyone liked blue and green so that's what you guys get blue and green no more pink yellow or whatever the other silly color was um orange yeah the one i'm using <laughs> we're using the ones that no one bought uh so here is what we came up with this is going to be the amp rack so that ski chute goes right here uh the mono block is on the driver's side because this is where the power, dual, the zero gauge power wire is going to come down and go up to the front. The ground will go off to uh, ground point somewhere in the back here. The signal is all gonna come down and go up the driver's side, I'm sorry, the passenger side. Um, it's getting the epicenter. So you come, which is the RCA that's not in yet, is the feed from here to here. So you're gonna come out of the D61200 into the epicenter, out of the epicenter, into the LC uh, 1.1500. Uh, that RCA is in place, the remote turn on is in place. Um, right now I'm working my way this way. So I have my power wire for the epicenter, the remote turn on for this amplifier, and I just added in this remote turn. All these are going to come like this. The RCA will come across around the back here and loop past here and into this and that'll that'll get this all taken care of and get that in the loop and of course the one thing i always forget uh two things i have the speaker wires and i need to get the bass knob for this amplifier so we're gonna have two bass knobs we're gonna have the epicenter bass knob and we'll have the volume control for the amplifier i guess i don't know i haven't i i have to find out i think we're doing that i mean it makes sense like why wouldn't we other than the fact that the radio has a uh silver front Underneath the hood of the car, hold on, there was a question here I wanted to come back to. Uh, hey Dean, second tune with Educar app after I hooked up. My rears does not sound as good, mostly from the sub running. No, 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 no. Okay, I guess that's bad. Nice. All right, let's come back down here. Uh, how do I submit some answer for Mexican music? I, honestly, like, okay, so with, um, you know, these two here you're gonna do it with your ear the volume the effects knob is just the these two and play your music and start you know adjusting these until you get them where you want them believe it or not 12 o'clock is pretty spot on most of the time um we don't really deviate much from this we'll, we'll you know if we want it super fat we'll go you know this is super fat we don't necessarily want it too too fat so um you know you can play with this if you want it dry but you have those effects there to play with. Underneath the hood, we've added in a uh, two grounds. So this this guy right here goes, there's a factory ground point right here in the engine block. You can kind of see it there. So we brought a zero gauge over and then there is, we added in a second ground point right there and they both go to the ground, which is not connected right now because we have the back seat out. The back seat has airbags. so. Um, and then we bolted them in. I don't want to run the risk of, of accidentally bumping that. So we're just going to leave that where it is, but we have dual zero gauge grounds to there. And then we'll of course have the zero gauge power that goes here, um, increasing the ground plane because we are running a big zero gauge. Um, whoa. All right, so that's, that's, I think, we got the radio out of the dash. That's as far as we've gotten. Um, 
The passive crossovers are more than likely gonna hide behind this because there's this area here where there is nothing going on. So I'm thinking I'm gonna mount those back there. This doesn't have the factory amplifier in it at all. It doesn't even have the basic, basic, basic audio amplifier. Um, so we're gonna run speaker wires up to the rears uh, and then we're gonna run our passive cross. So we're gonna run a bunch of wires up front and six wires up front, mid bass, mid range, tweeter, um, and just mount everything else in the rear. Cause I don't wanna have to pull out the seats or and all that silliness. So it's just easier just to run our own wires. Um, what are your thoughts on the Rockford 360.3? It's dated. I mean, it still works, but it's dated. I, I personally would never run it, um, but you could still get it, I guess. Um, there's so much nicer DSP out there now. Even the DSR-1 is, in my opinion, a better you know, processor to play with. Any concerns with the sub messing with the K2 coaxials in the rear deck? I mean, who hasn't run speakers in the rear deck with subs in the back? I'm not worried about it. No, I'm not. Um, no, it's not gonna, no reason to worry about it now. Um, I mean, we've been running speakers and rear decks with subs beating the crap out of the car and very rarely do we ever have, actually, I don't think we've ever had any problems in the 30 years I've done this, but so no, I'm not worried about it. Uh, how come people say that epicenters cause distortion? Anything you put in a car causes distortion, your gain, your amplifier, you, you can put all of it causes distortion. It's just a matter of what you are trying to do. Um, are you looking at the signal as distorted? Um, meaning like, oh, I have my gains turned up to 10 dBs and all this other crap, and then, yo, know, now it's distorting. You know, if you turn up your bass boost on your amplifier and you're looking at it, you know, if you're looking at a, a DD1 or if you're looking at a clip detector, it'll, it's gain. Anything that adds gain adds distortion. So what you run into is that if you've set your amplifier to 10 dBs, negative 10 dBs, which is a positive 10 dB on the output, and then you add an epicenter to it. Well, now you, you're adding gain. Um, so gain is going to add distortion. Um, but no, an epicenter just does what an epicenter does. An EQ does what an EQ does. All of them are increasing the output. All of them can cause distortion. There again, it just comes down to uh, gain structure and being smart about it. Uh, where can I buy a box for 07 Tundra double cap? Hmm. I mean, there's a ton of places. Uh, uh, you know, I'm a big fan of A-Trend. If you're looking for something more custom, I don't know if MTI makes a box for that, that old. Um, not that, you know, it's an 07. I mean, it just feels like it's it's not that old, but it, it kind of is. But um, Q-Power, maybe? I mean, yeah. Have you ever had to add fans for cooling in any of your recent amp locations installed in the past few years? No. Actually, no, we haven't added any fans. Um, I'm not a big, f oh, geez. I'm not a big fan of fans, um, but no, most, the only time we ran into an issue, which um, is why we changed to the rear deck was we have, uh, and we did a Camaro for a friend of ours and we put some amps and he put a lot of amps. It wasn't like it was just one amp. It was like a lot of amps and a lot of DSP stacked on top of one another and a, and, and a Camaro trunk. And those got hot. But he drives his car for like, he drives back and forth to North Carolina all the time. So, you know, yeah, we're going to have some heating issues. Um, so we, we've been toying with the idea of adding amplifiers to those. But no, not really. Um, we haven't had any issues with that. Uh, how to set gains with Educar app. Edu the Educar app only provides the test tones for setting the gain. So you still need some form of distortion detector or do the math and use your, your digital multimeter f to find out what your output voltage is. Um, but on the app itself, it has the uh, 1,000, the 40, it has an 800, yeah. it, has, it, has it has four 40. tones, yeah. um, and then it has zero, negative five, negative 10. Um, so it's, it's just per providing you the sounds, you still need a device in order to do the setup. Uh, why would a BT24 make a bad pop in the sub when I leave it 
and the DM6 I, I thought it was my deck but replaced it and still there I don't know um pop? yeah um I would honestly just call tech support I mean it could be just something in the way you have it set up meaning you you know you might have one of the channels on that shouldn't be on um but yeah I would I would probably something in the setup i would just give them a call and have one of the guys walk you through the setup and just make sure everything is is the way it's supposed to be um but to me that sounds like a setup in you uh please oh yeah tomorrow once we get the amp rack done we'll show you what the amp rack looks like um time zero one. weird yeah i would definitely it sounds like a setup issue uh what's a good mono amp oh never mind that went away that was neat sorry uh, I, I meant to answer that, but it just refreshed and took that away. What's a good mono amp to run two 10-inch Alpine Type R subs, dual tools, ported box? You want to find something about 750 watts um, or somewhere between 750. Honestly, I don't even know what Alpine makes anymore as far as that goes. Um, but maximum 1,000. I mean, if you're trying to do it like reasonably you know you have rockford makes the r2 750.1 stinger i'm sorry uh i don't know what the ohm load is on it um kicker has the 801 the cs 801 um but yeah just look for something between 7 800 if you want to go the lc uh, lc 1.800 from audio control would be nice um so there's there's a couple uh wow okay any reputable sound shops you would recommend is socal uh socal car audio i think is what it's called yeah um i don't know he's on instagram all the time uh just type in socal car stereo and see uh i think he comes up um get, i follow him on instagram it does great work i mean i don't know him personally or at least if i do i don't remember meeting him sorry but he, there is somebody from that on instagram that i follow from there and they do really nice stuff uh tell them to swing through <laughs> Yeah. Uh, can you guys do a walkthrough on how to set gains for DM608 with high level coming in? Uh, I mean, if, uh, yeah, if we ever get one, we could, but we honestly, we don't do a lot of the external DSPs. We do more internal DSP, which it basically be the same. Um, yeah. But the thing you want to look at when, okay, just something to get you rocking and rolling is, you know, play your pink noise, disconnect your amp. I mean, you can leave your speakers on. It really doesn't matter. But um, disconnect the... All right, hold on. I'm, I'm thinking of two things at once here, which is kind of funny. Play your pink noise, feed it into the DM608. On your input setup page, there's an RTA on the bottom of it. That's your input RTA. Take a look at the signal and see what's going on with it, meaning how bad does it look. Run the, go to your next page, once you have all your um, crossovers and all that fun stuff taken care of, go to your next page, and which is your tune page, and you have an auto EQ feature set on that. Run the auto EQ feature while still running the pink noise, and then go to your third page and you should have all three of the EQs, RTAs available to you. So you should see what it looks like coming in. You should see what it looks like going out. If it's pretty flat, well, then you could set it up as a normal gain structure, meaning you can uh, disconnect the speakers from the amplifiers and play your test tones and start setting up your gain. Um, when doing a DSP, it's not terrible to do zero dB, especially if you're planning on doing volume any any form of positive uh eq gain because uh, keep in mind if you do like let's say negative 5 db which you might be able to do at the end there's no reason to not do it at the end but you okay yeah I'm okay okay um there's no reason to not do it at the end but you know sometimes being able going with the lower gain and being able to gain up on the eq can sometimes make your life a lot easier um when setting it up always you know always recommend gaining down however if you have the room you can have fun uh kicker only has 50 hertz test tones is that okay or should i do pay for 40 uh no 50 is fine 50 is fine um that's uh, if you 
Uh, I think if you want a 40, you can go to Rockford. Rockford's website will have a 40. Because you can download all their test tones now, too. So they'll have a 40 on there. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, look up... Uh, yeah, Gary Bell's shop to find concepts. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, I don't... Is he in SoCal? I don't know, but he's in Cali. I know. Well, dude, Cali's a big place. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Uh, I need the ATM refresher too. Uh, so the nice thing about all the audio control stuff is it's all the same, okay? Eight, eight, six, all the amplifiers, they all use the same software. So everything I've said is the, the exact same all the way across the board. So um, we kind of walk you, yeah, I mean, it kind of walks you through it. This will be two, two, one, four, four, DMC, eight, ten, input gains, how to find clip volume, then setting up, yeah. Uh, Dean pro tip of the day. Um, do we have anything pro tip wise? Man, I know, right? It's been one of those days. We're just lucky to be here. I don't have a pro tip. Um, pro tip of the day. Anytime you're getting ready. Okay, here you go, Bobby. This, this is for you. We, we've talked about this one a bunch of times. Um, let me go over here to my laptop. So. Uh, we're putting in this this LC. Hold on, let me flip it around here. We're putting in this LC uh, 1500, the uh, 61200. Uh, we have 340 amp fuses here, 440 amp fuses here. That gets us to uh, what do we say? 280 amps of fusing. That's four, what's uh, six six times four? 240. Yeah. All right, so 240 amps of fusing. All right, so what size wire do we want to run? Right over here, we talk about it all the time. Right on my laptop. I didn't even have to launch this because I was looking at it earlier. All right, we're gonna do 16 to 19 feet. We have 200 to 250 amps of fuse. Even we use this zero gauge. All right, so we're safe to use zero gauge. It's right here. Um, we could even go up to 300 amps. So even if this amplifier decides to like draw a super current, six to nine, 16 to 19 feet, we're perfect. So. Pro tip, man, even pros use this. This is right here on my laptop. Normally, I, I have a copy that I'm gonna stick it to the wall here. I just, I, I haven't printed it. So I just had my laptop out earlier today. I pulled it open, made sure that zero gauge is gonna do it. Otherwise, I was gonna run, because we're going, normally in the F-150s, it's, it's not, you know, we're cool. But I wanted to make sure we had enough in this. So, yay, we do. Perfect, so there you go, pro tip. Even pros do that. I had to take my Helix software was com complicated. Oh man, that sucks. And no support, which is weird because uh, well, they don't you know. Yeah, that's a whole nother topic. Um, it is complicated, uh, the, the Helix software. I mean, dude, come on. I mean, we've played with 10 different DFP software. So, I mean, we have a little bit better understanding than most. When it comes to that, so I mean, if you be patient, man. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I like the software. Don't get me wrong; I'm a big fan. Like, I love the Helix software. I mean, we've done two Helix back to back now, and it's like, ooh, I really like this, um, just because it does things that I want. Uh, but you know, if if I was walking into it for the first time, there again, you know, a lot of people get scared, and yeah. it's just a box, and it yeah. just does things, and it's. Oh, I, yeah. It, that's a whole nother topic that it's we just could beat up. There's a lot of things in the page that you like, oh, I don't know. Overwhelming, yep. for sure. It is. Um, in your opinion, do you think having proper fuses in a high power setting setup limits the current getting to the amps? That's what I've been told by a couple of folks. Not sure I believe it. Really? What? Yeah, no, man. Relax. I mean, you got to have a fuse, okay? You got to have a fuse. That's it. It, there's no question about it, you know. It, it, fuse for what? For everything. Oh, no, man. Run, it Run them naked. Uh, I mean, I, all right. So, e even an amplifier. So, like, here we go. These these are the fuses on the amplifier. So, what's coming into here is passing through these fuses. So, it's it's there to pass through. So, everything has a fuse. Even an amplifier that doesn't have a fuse still has like a form of a circuit breaker built into it, some are smarter than others. I call it a circuit breaker, just speaking as generic as possible. Um, but everything has this type of circuit built into it. Now, you know, when we're going through all this metal, 
I'm putting a fuse here, I don't care what it is. I just wanna make sure it is adequate size to support both these amplifiers. In this case, you know, 250 would be fine. 300 to 250 is gonna work perfect for these. But, you know, that, yes. You're not the first person to say that. And if you think about it, you know, when you're looking at a fuse, okay, your logical brain is going, wait a minute, why, how in the hell is, is this little thing right here gonna pass? You know, I have this, I have this water hose. I have this giant water hose right here going, and then the, this is, no, it doesn't make sense. This is a choke point. This is gonna add resistance, it's gonna add heat. All that is correct. However, it doesn't matter because I gotta have it or I could burn the car down. So, I, you know, it's one of those moot points. Who gives a crap? Doesn't matter. It's gotta be there. Uh, all right. I replaced the three and a half speakers in the dash, but then it cuts out mid base and the door for RAV 2004. It loops from the three and a half to the door. Yes, it does. You have to continue the loop. Uh, Toyotas typically have some form of a four wire connector that comes out of the radio into the dash speaker, out of the dash speaker, down to the door. Um, Metra does make a, an adapter for that. Um, do we know where those are at? Which one? The Metro adapter for the Toyota Dash. Yeah. Here you go. Fernando has the part number right here. It's an 8072-8110. And inside, it'll have, has a little connector, a little black thing. Mm -hmm. I was gonna say, it's okay, we can open it. You ripped the bag, man. <laughs> You rip the bag, so it has this little connector here that has four wires inside of it, and it just loops through. Ooh. Just show me this piece right here. So there you go, that's that's what you need for a Toyota. <coughs> or if you just want to figure it out, all right, so there you go, there's your positives and negatives. <coughs> so if, you, if you're looking at this, then you can wire it up the same way, and you'll have your uh, speaker working again. Okay, blacks are negative, whites are positive. Yes. Uh, a lot of guys in the SPO world don't use fuses uh, handily anymore. I uh, know thoughts right. I'd rather have a choke point than destroyed car. Yeah, 100%. Um, you know, the hydraulic guys used to do that too. They used to have a giant... Um, that was my dream. Hydraulics? Yes. Well, so what we'd, what we'd have then is... Then I find out how much, how much money you can spend, and I'm like, yep. Oh, Bill would take a giant piece of, of copper tie a rag around it mm -hmm. and then have two like giant receivers and it'd be in the back of the car and if the car decided to go crazy you you pull the the, the rag and that's your fuse and i'm like seriously bro <laughs> why you can, not <laughs> you go man you go yeah those were the good old days uh why some amplifiers have bolts written on gain settings like six to one volts is it to match it with the volts that are coming out of the head unit Yes, actually, 100%. That is exactly what that's for. Um, these, no. does this have it? No, this no. does not have it. So I don't, I don't, hold on. Do I have an amp here that has, hold on. Do these, any, does any of these amplifiers that we have have that? That doesn't because that's underneath there. Does that have it? It'd be on the top. It's on the top. It just says min max. Oh no, that does, You're right there. Hold on, let me show you, okay, so. What you're talking about is this right here, where it says gain one to 11 volts. So this amplifier should take anywhere between one to 11 volts of input. Where that gets confusing is that on this particular gain, that one to 11 volts is both high level and low level. So the high level side will go all the way up to 11 volts, where the low level side, uh, you can go down as low as one volt. So if you have a radio that has very crappy output, then you know, you're going to be putting your gain low. But yeah, it's designed to match. Uh, Kenwood amplifiers have it too. Uh, there's typically start at like, so the idea is to kind of match that up. It's just like the crossover that silk screened on the side of the amplifier. It's not 100%, meaning you can't be like, that's four volt because there's a four right there. And eh, plus or minus an eighth or a 16th of an inch is usually what you're looking at. But the idea was, you know, we at least know where we're going to generally be. It was a, it was a simple way um, from a time when it was easier to set up an amplifier. Um, you just 
get it close to whatever the output voltage is of the radio and ship it on its way as long before like dd1s were available or anyone wanted to sit there and figure out how to do it with their digital multimeter um yeah it just made things easy now we have amplifiers with distortion lights built into them so you know you, you're just like awesome uh, is there an amplifier that sends voltage from the remote screw to turn on another amp when it has been turned on with high level inputs auto on option actually yes most amplifiers that have a high level input the remote turn on becomes an output once you've actually activated the amplifier um, I think pretty much all the amplifiers that we deal with do that so for example if I was doing the high level input section here on this amplifier. This becomes an output and would turn all these amplifiers on. Most amplifiers do that. Um, so yeah, it becomes weird because you, you can actually screw things up uh, when doing high level. That's why on like some of the newer amplifiers, they have on off switches for that feature. So like on the all the audio controls that had the GTO on and off switch. And then if you look at like um, the this guy here, it has a turn off for the remote turn on. Um, the reason why those are both in there is so that you don't use DC offset uh, or if you're not using DC offset, you can still turn on the amplifier with an external remote turn on because as soon as it sees that you're using high level these amplifiers, it automatically senses switches to the DC offset to turn on the amplifier and turns that to an output. If you've hooked up the remote turn on, it's gonna feed the remote turn on out to whatever circuit you're thinking you're using to turn it on. You understand what I'm saying, guys? So that is an output that you're feeding to another accessory in the car. It's not gonna do any damage, but it could do weird things. Uh, it could do damage, but yes, that is an, that is an oddity, but mm-hmm. All right, uh, people say to set your remote base knob halfway when setting your gains. Why is that? Would it be different for RCA Vaughn? No, turn your base knob all the way up. You don't leave it down. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, there again, if you're setting your gains to let's say negative 10 dBs of overlap, you better make sure your base knob is turned all the way up because it's a plus 10 dB boost is what that's happening. And if you have your base knob halfway up, that means you still have the rest of the way to go, which means not are, you're not doing a 10 dB boost now. You could be doing a 20 dB boost, depending on how much more signals coming out of your base knob. So, yeah, no, it needs to be up. It, you know, wherever, all the, way. all the way, man. Max volume is max volume. Don't play around. You'll blow your woofers. Um, is mixing and matching speakers okay? For instance, I want to run a Pico tweeter the Elite mid-range with a GB60. Ooh, Pico Twitter, huh? I'll take a page out of the home audio catalog for this one. When you design a home cabinet, you have a certain tonality that you're trying to hit, all right? So you say, I want it to sound like this. So you find the tweeter manufacturer that can make you a tweeter. Morel is one of, that's their thing. They make tweeters for tons of home audio manufacturers um, so I want this frequency response in the high high bands I want this frequency response in the mid band and then I want this from my mid bass then you design a passive crossover that would blend all that together and so that you don't get any phase or cancellation or any of that baloney and you would put in a nice cabinet <clears throat> port the cabinet or not port the cabinet and then you would sell that and be like listen to how amazing this sounds there is no reason you can't do that in a car. That's actually how we used to do it. You know, we would buy uh, a certain brand of tweeter, a certain brand of mid-range, and a certain brand of mid-bass. And we'd put it all together, set the crossovers, and kind of pray for the best. So, no, there's nothing wrong with that. People are hooked on brands. Like, people are like, you know, I have this, so all this stuff has to match. I mean, case in point, since we're standing right here, this is getting a set of Illusion Audio three and a half inch bi ampable components in the front. So this is a component, even though that tweeter is mounted as a coaxial, this is a mid base. Here are the passive crossovers that are designed to power these. So this is a component set and the doors were going with a set of K2 Focal mid base. 
um, mix and match. It's what's going to work. <clears throat> Pretty exciting. Yeah. All right, guys, that brings us to the end of the day. If we didn't answer your questions, I apologize. There's always tomorrow. We'll come back up. We'll hopefully be at it almost done or if not like really close to being done or okay. almost i don't know we'll bring you in tomorrow once we get the amp rack finished up and show you how that looks in the car and of course the radio and the dash once we get that built and done the factory radios out so life is good there so and we'll of course try to take some more questions depending on how much time we have and yeah. with that you guys have a spectacular rest of your day did you get the back deck in uh yes oh Let's you're so good yeah. all right guys We'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Bye. Dude, that's going to bop you in the head. Want me to close the seat? Yeah. Good day, everyone. All right, there you go. How's everybody doing? Uh, photographer Fernando here is um, doing his thing. Don't you find it strange when you're going through Instagram and you like you find your pictures? Yeah. Posted yeah, somewhere yeah. else. Oh. Yeah. Who is this guy? They they. Who is, yeah. Who yeah. Oh, it's us. Last yeah. night when I was brushing my teeth, I always kind of do the Instagram. Yeah. Like that's when I get my two minutes to get Instagram in. Yeah. Because you're supposed to brush your teeth for two minutes. I typically do four. But, um, and uh, was it B two or two B or? B two audio. Is, it, is oh, that who? B2 not, quality, something like something, that. Yeah. Something like that. Had one of my videos on there. I was like, oh, look at that. Uh, well, why Fernando's doing that and having lots of fun in the trunk, we just finished this. We finished the tune. We got her all set and ready to go. This is the Avalon. We didn't come on last night because it was late and we just wanted to finish. So here is the 10 inch and the dash. Uh, it tips forward which is nice about the Kenwood so you can bring it forward and whatnot the one thing that, that you have to remember when you're putting one of these 10 inch in the dash is like this dash you have a curve here you have a curve here you have a curve here there's a curve here there isn't a straight line anywhere in the dash except for this silver trim right here and that silver trim isn't actually straight either it's it's curved because the dash is coming at you like a cockpit so when you put a big screen like this in here okay and you tip it forward it's going to look and be crooked in the dash even though it's perfectly straight and lined up because the car is crooked um so that's just something to think about if if, if you get easily irritated by things like that then the big screen in the dash might not be for you um you know when it's tipped like this it looks perfectly normal because the rest of the dash is angled but when you bring it up towards you as you can see like this this is actually going up and then you know so there's there's lots of curves and this is going down and so there's a lot of stuff going on that's something that a lot of people just don't think about when they add one of these big monitors to the dash and of course you know you got to get to the air conditioner don't necessarily need the vents but yeah um so that's done and that turned out really nice uh the big screen is is gorgeous i mean it's just it's it's wow um over here is the base knobs uh what we did is we the trunk pop was right here kind of silly we and because this was empty and this one was empty so we moved the trunk pop over and we made the epicenter base knob here and then the regular subwoofer level control here i think this lights up orange this lights up green but there's your and of course it says the epicenter and that's that and oh man this thing is so much fun i love the epicenter um but those are your base knobs let's head up here to the uh underneath the hood hopefully this has shocks oh it has shocks thank god i was just thinking why does this have shocks and my car doesn't but i ordered the shocks for my car because it's silly um so here's the fuse uh audio control 250 amp zero gauge all connected up uh, if you missed the previous one, we uh, did the ground upgrade. So we have a ground that goes down here to the, to the, it's a unibody construction. So to say to the frame rails is kind of silly because it's not actually the frame rails, but it still has like a frame rail to mount the motor. So we went to that um, because it was easy to get to. We had to pull the battery out anyways. And then this zero gauge here goes off to a factory ground point on the block. 
So we've upgraded two big ground points there, along with adding, of course, the zero gauge to power the whole system. The front cam is located right there. Let's go in and let's take a look at those. And of course the dash cam is in place. If anyone wants to know how the dash cam integrates with this radio, cause this is the Kenwood that integrates with this. We did release a video on how to do that. And I think today is the last in the 10 part episode. Um, and then tomorrow, which is Friday, will be the whole big video. So if, you, if you're one of those guys who likes to wait till the very end to see the whole video, you can. All right, we'll hit camera here. So there's the dash cam and then we'll pick front cam. So here's the front cam. These are all the high res cameras. And then here's the rear cam that's gonna be looking at the ceiling or looking at Fernando back there. Um, so look, how, look how nice that is. I mean, it's just so big. I mean, it gets so much and like that front cam action. Wow, right? Like if you're, if you, and look, okay, so like this and this is actually that license plate holder. So, I mean, that's how wide this is. I mean, it's looking at the trash can that's right there. And, you know, the workbench door, which we can't even see in frame because like, I, I mean, wow. So like, you're not hitting anything with this. So the nice thing is, is and when you're done, just tap there and it goes away. And there's those lights. So it's yellow and green. My bad, I got them wrong. Um, I'll just turn that off. All right. Oh yeah, oh, making the noise, making the noise. Doors are done, dash is done. All right, so this has the Illusion. We've talked about these before. The CS, the C3CX Illusion coaxial. So this is the carbon uh, C3CX three and a half inch kit, all right? Um, if you get it, this is the factory we took out. We put these in place. Let me, let me tell you what, if, if you guys have three and a halfs in the dash and you're looking for the best of the best, thank you, sir. My God, man, those things are amazing. Like I haven't heard a pair in, I don't know, a year and a half, two years since yeah. we've last heard those yeah. and just sit in this car and listen to those. Oh, my God, they're just, it's just unbelievable the amount of sound that comes out of those. And it's sound, they're so balanced, even without equalization, just like straight out of the box played in, so balanced. So, mm, um, it's wonderful. They are wonderful. Uh, let's, let's see if we can get down here and see what Fernando's got going on in, in this. All right, so he's playing with the new LumaCube light panel that we got, having lots of fun with that. And here is the finished product. So we have the LC61200, we have the LC1.15, the epicenter. Uh, if you wanna know the path, so this RCA here, which is the output, comes along here, goes into the input, out of here, into this. And that's it, that's all you gotta do. Crossover on this, of course, is what we're using. Um, yeah, so nice. And then added the five-star logo, power wire, distribution, and that's it. It's attached into the car, so this is gonna come forward. There's actually brackets here and a bracket here that go through, because there's a metal structure behind this, so we've attached, we bolted brackets into the metal structure, and then these screw into that, um, those brackets to hold this up against the seat, so if he needs to take it out or whatever. Uh, and then, because it, it, there is enough wire in either side of it, so that if we do need to slide it forward for whatever, whatever reason, we can. Um, we've built that into the build. How are you doing? Oh, no, no, no. You having fun with the colors? Yeah. yeah. All right. So that's the finished amp rack, and then the wire right here is the umbilical that we have for, of course, the Q class. Alrighty. And so that's it. That's the Avalon in all its glory. Uh, what wire setups? Oh, that wire setup so nice. I wish people in the industry did it like that more often. Brilliant setup. A lot of people do do it. And, and like uh, Fernando was talking with a buddy of his the other day. It was kind of a, um, over in California. And he was asking us, he's like, you know, you guys do that stuff all the time. A guy came in and was like, hey, ironically enough, he, he said, I want it done like this. And, you know, he's like, I know those guys. And um, 
you know, it's, the thing is, is like the way we do this, obviously, that's our custom. That's what takes our time. We don't spend time on eight pillars and boxes and stuff like that. We spend time on the wiring and whatnot. A lot of places will do it if you show them pictures, but they are going to charge you extra because for one, that's not something they do all the time. So they don't have the speed down yet. Um, they may not have a wire ruler, by the way, blue and green uh, in stock. So make sure if you need your blue and green wire ruler, pick them up at mobilesolutions.com. Um, but yeah, a lot of, a lot of guys will, will, will do it that way. They're just, you know, if it takes four or five hours, they're going to charge you four or five hours. RRR2 with the big radio. This one got an RR2. Um, he's not using any of the MPOs or Maestro programmable outputs. The, they are there if he ever needs them. Um, the thing that's nice about this RR2 is that if he ever needs to do a software update, he can do it over his phone. So he can download the Bluetooth app onto his phone and get the serial number for it off of the screen of the radio and then do a update on the RR2 if it ever needs it. Keep in mind guys, don't do updates on things like that unless they are car specific. Like if you, your car's doing something weird, you call them up and they're like, yeah, do this update, it fixes that, which happens, happens all the time. But don't just do updates to do updates. They're not like laptops and phones and stuff like that. And I know some guys won't do their updates on their phone, which is totally understandable because yes, now we know they change, it kills the battery. Not really, it's just, that's a whole nother discussion. Uh, those amps have the blue backlights, correct. Yes, they do. They, out of the top of the amplifiers, they will light up on, they will light up blue. Uh, customer kicker box? No, this is our kicker box. We sold it to them. This is the Q-Class. So if you've never seen the Q-Class box from Kicker, this is the two, two 12s. They build them at this angle. Let me tell you what, this carpet is like the plushest carpet. Oh my gosh. Like this is nice, but man, I love this carpet. This isn't like anything they put on any of their other boxes. It just comes on the Q-Class. And of course they do the cute, cool L7 logo here. This is like a vinyl wrapped. Um, and it goes all the way around, but man, this carpet is so nice. They make this in a 212, 210, 110, 112. And if you get the 112 or 110, it's half of the box. So it's still at this angle, which is kind of nice because it gives you multiple mounting options. You can set it like this. Uh, so, you know, you can have it leaning back and facing up. There's a lot of different things you can do with it. Um, what's the epicenter do for you with the six channel amp already being able to process the RCA outs? Um, so, in, uh, all right. But let's. So it has six channel amplifier because it's running the three and a half in the dash, the six and a half inch mid base K2s in the door and the six and a half inch K2 coaxials in the rear deck. So we have front rear and sub RCAs plugged into the amplifier because that amplifier has a DSP built into it. So to give you an idea, we'll get a closer look here at the breakdown. Uh, this is front, this is rear, this is sub, this is output. Now how this is designed is Channels one and two are powering these four here. So one through four are getting powered off of this RCA. Five and six, which is down here, is getting powered off of these RCAs. This is coming into here, and then we can add time alignment. Um, we don't necessarily have to use the crossover because we can use the one in the amplifier, but it allows us to also control the gains uh, coming into the amplifier and out to there. So we can do all our signal and everything through the amplifier. Also, if we were going to use the AC3 subwoofer level control that's built into the amplifier, let's say we're not going with an audio control amp, then we could control it all through this. Uh, out of this, into the epicenter, out of the epicenter, into the amplifier. You still may want to do some equalization to the subamp, which you can do before you go into the epicenter you still need to tune the output uh, if this is connected to a factory radio that has bass roll off or um, just has a really crappy eq section it's eq'd subwoofer and you need to get the subwoofer back to flat this has auto eq built into it which will do that and get it back to a usable signal we could set the accu base in here so we don't have to do it after the fact because after the fact can be kind of weird sometimes when you're yeah because you're epicenter anyways um so you, you definitely want to come into the processor first. And even though this is an amplifier, it's also the processor out of this into here, off to there, and you're off to the races. So it's pretty fun. All right. 
Uh, what's a good budget SQ setup for daily driven cars? Had the option to get the Bose, but figured I can do better. Um, there, there's a ton uh, when you're looking at, really it's gonna come down to power and how much power you want and whatnot, but there's nice amplifiers that are multi-channel small amplifiers that work really well. So for example, um, obviously you have the Helix, uh, you have the Audison, Forza, and the Bit series amplifiers. These are eight channel amplifiers. Uh, if you're a fan of Arc Audio, you have the Arc Audio PS850. They're again, another cool uh, small amplifier. Obviously you have something like a kicker key to do a front stage upgrade. You can do that with one of those, put it on the front stage and just increase the sound quality up front. Um, as far as speakers go, there's a ton of speakers out there. Every exotic brand makes a, an affordable alternative. So for example, like if you're looking at Audison, uh, you have the Prima line of speakers, which are very nice and are designed to work really well with those. They're efficient, uh, low power handling speakers that work great with those amplifiers and are made to pair up with them nicely. Um, Focal makes the performance series, I'm sorry, makes the plug and play as well as, is it the performance series? I can't remember what it's called. They make access and they make a speaker right along those same lines. Uh, very affordable, very nice sounding. Morel has the Maximo, Maximus line of speakers, which are phenomenal. And then in the Hertz line, you have Cento, Cento Pro. And then if you really want to go super affordable, you have Dici. Um, Kenwood makes the Exelons, which are nice. Alpine has the R-Types, which are nice. There's tons of speakers is what I'm getting at. So basically pick your budget and start shopping for equipment that will fulfill your budget. Uh, is it a full range out to the epicenter? Um, it's not full range. It needs to be 160 or more um, out to it. Is so minimum of 160 and then whatnot to, uh, to that. In this case, we can make it anything we want because we're coming out of the DSP, so we can program it to, to play any frequency we want out of it and then set your subwoofer crossover on your amplifier. So. Like if you're coming out of a deck that has a subwoofer low pass filter built into it, uh, just turn it up to whatever the highest it'll go to and use the crossover on the amplifier. Um, I, yeah, I'm not a fan. I mean, they're okay. Uh, I, for a little bit more, you can get a lot better than those. So I would, I would spend the money. Um, but no, I mean, it's, it's a great, if you, if you're coming off your deck, you want a basic upgrade and you're like, I just want something that's nice and affordable. Yes, the auditor is the way to go. If you're planning on building a system with amplifiers and stuff like that, you're gonna want a better better speaker. Greetings from Chicago. Pro tech tip of the day. Um, always keep, keep a, a rag in the install bay, uh, microfiber cloth, which um, I don't know where Fernando has his. Where's your, where's your rag? Bottom? This one? Oh, there it is. So Fernando and I have it, but mine's buried in my toolbox. Fernando has this cool microfiber cloth right here. Uh, and it's only used for wiping off glass and paint. It stays in a plastic bag um, so that it doesn't pick up any of the sawdust or debris or anything like that. Always keep, if you're gonna have a shop rag that's specifically for wiping off cars, keep it in a plastic bag, keep it safe. Um, and don't wipe off dirty cars. Like if you got a dirty car, then don't even don't even mess with it. We have two different ones. Yeah, we have. I mean, we have several, but yeah, you definitely want to do that. Um, here, you want me to move the light out of there? No, that's cool. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say you don't want to accidentally get it in the shot. Um, the new LumaCube LED panel. This is pretty awesome. We got this for the rig we're building for Knowledge Fest. So there's a box here somewhere. So that'll be fun. Alrighty. Um, awesome job, customer was very happy. I hope it was happy. Ow. Uh, yeah, that's about it. You got anything? Look at him, he's just having fun back there. Just, look at him, he's going crazy. This is what he does, man. Yep, so when you guys see those pictures on his page, this is, this is him, he spends a good 10, 15 minutes on that. So Knowledge Fest is back on. Knowledge Fest is back on, Victor. It is the end of the month. We'll be there 25th, 6th, and 7th. We leave here Thursday the 24th after work. As we get closer, we'll talk about it because I don't know what we're gonna do for like live shows and stuff like that on Saturday. 
Um, we haven't figured it out yet. We are going to film a ton of stuff while we're there, but we don't know what. So yeah, the sub box is the uh, L7, 212 L7 Q class box waiting to go in. Uh, it is very much ported. Um, if you, so Kicker does this cool thing, it's ported here down the center. And then they put this logo here that kind of pops into the sides here. But yeah, it's it's super ported, super loud, super boomy. It's ridiculous. I'm sure you must be sick. Oh yeah, dude, we're time we're yeah for that after freaking 2020. We're dying to go back, we're dying to talk. Uh, what brand zip ties do you like? I mean, we buy our, our zip ties from Ant Global, um, and they don't really they just come as as this in a bag. Um, I don't know the manufacturer they get them from, but I can tell you they, they actually changed the manufacturer once and I lost my shit on them. It's the easiest way to say it. They actually sent two of the guys over from the company they were buying them from. And we're like, dude, these are garbage, man. And we kind of walked them through how zip ties were supposed to work in this industry. And they just kind of looked dumbfounded at me like, this is a thing. And it's like, yeah, this is a thing. Like these have to work this way. So they ended up switching back to their other vendor. Um, so that was actually kind of funny. Uh, what's the next car on the list? I have no idea. Yes. We don't get that far. There's always um, another one. Yeah. Dean on the Fox Box with two tens or Dodge. Should I order their bar grills or don't run grills? I don't think we've ever put grills on the Fox Box in the Ram. Yeah, I wouldn't bother. Um, I mean, if you're concerned. If you want to, go, I mean, I'm not going to tell you don't spend your money, yeah. but we personally have never ran them on top of our subwoofers. No. It's the carpet underneath there, so. Right. Um, uh, let's see. There are a lot of crappy zip ties out there. A lot yeah. of crappy yeah. zip ties. Um, Oscar, what's up, brother? Oh, there he is. What's up, man? Uh, who would win in an arm wrestling match, Kicker or Rockford? Ooh. I think you'd have to break it down in their individual components. I don't think you could just like, I think you'd have to have like uh, motorsports division go against motorsports division, then car wow. audio go against the car audio division, yeah. subwoofer go against subwoofer. I mean, there's legendary pieces all across the board. You know, so I, I really don't know. I think it would be equally matched. I'm not going to lie. I, I don't know. I don't know. Because, I mean, you look at like, okay, if you would have asked me this last year before everyone out, out there knew that they were coming out with the big subwoofer from Kicker, uh -huh. well, then obviously in the subwoofer war, uh, Rockford would have won because they got a T, the T3 monster juggernaut. Yeah. Well, they have T1 and the T3. Yeah. Um, so like kicker didn't have anything to compete in that realm so they were just rah, boom but now that we have the new you know giant woofer coming from kicker uh that you guys know about um yeah you know now that's a fair, fair competition Solo. uh they both have like rockford has a 25 yeah. kicker has a 24 right now mm -hmm. um it would be tough you know entry level wise like they have a 750 on rockford sides kicker has an 800 uh, you know, so it, w it would just be like, ah, you know. Uh, have you ever put a sub box in a ridgeline? Yes. The new one, no. The old one, yes. Yeah, I, I don't exactly. think we've had enough of the um, the new ones in to, to warrant that. What's up, guys? Uh, JLO 10W6 or Kicker Q-Class 10 sealed? Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> That's a tough one. Not that, not I gotta be honest, I have never heard a Q class sealed. I've heard the JL sealed and it's impressive, but I've, really I've never heard a Q class sealed, so I, I gotta go with what I've heard, but that doesn't mean I wouldn't want to try it. Right. So, oh, yeah. um, I've, just, I've just never heard it sealed. So, how is the visual on the Kenwood screen compared to the Alpine in direct sunlight? It's the best viewing. Okay, one of the things about the Kenwood, like right on the first page when you go and they talk about theirs, is that they flat out tell you it's the best off-axis viewing of any screen ever made um, for a car. Let's preface it with that because some of these marine ones are like unbelievable. Uh -huh. um, off-axis viewing is tremendous. It's also a higher resolution screen than the Alpine. Alpine still hasn't come out with a high-res screen. They don't have anything to get that excited about. Um, 
but this is ridiculous uh, I can I had it in my car um, I've had their screens in my car uh, I haven't put in the convertible yet to do the ultimate test but uh, yes the off-axis viewing is is wonderful uh, Q-Class sealed is less efficient for sure. Yeah, put lots of power on it though, call it a day. I have the Rocker Fosgate Dual 12, 1200 watts. It sends a lot of power, a lot of vibration. I would agree. P3s, baby, all day long. Big fan, big fan. Love the P3s. Um, uh, plans for weekend, boring life. Um, so this weekend is actually Haley's birthday is on the 13th, which is Sunday. And we have like grandparents all weekend that we have to, she's, she's kind of like, oh, I've realized that my birthday isn't for me, it's for everyone else. I'm like, it's about time you figured that out. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so it'll be grandparents weekend. I don't know what we're gonna film. We'll, we'll see what happens. We, luckily we have a few in the can now, so we're, we, we have some, uh, we like to do that anytime, just like here, you, you need to have backup video, because sometimes, honestly, sometimes we have a really boring weekend, and unless you guys just wanted to see us in the living room watching Netflix, it, it would be, be bad. Uh, what PC Mac are you all using to connect to DSP software like Audio Control Smart DSP? Funny you should ask. We have them sitting right here because we just got done using them. So this is my Mac here, and I use this to run the DMRTA. This is our Windows machine here. This is a Lenovo Yoga. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this guy here, which is straight. Okay. All right. Let's be honest, guys. Could you rip anything else off? But I like this, because even though it is a basic a Windows clone of this, uh, look at the screen, so much nicer. Oh my God, yeah, so much nicer. Anyways, uh, this is what we use to do the, um, the DSPs, all DSPs. This will work, we can run uh, JL as well as audio control on this. Um, I don't do any virtual machining on this because it's the computer is way too important to, to deal with any Windows stuff on this. Uh, it's much easier just to buy a cheap Windows box. Um, I think this one wasn't that cheap. This was like 750 bucks, but it, form factor wise, it was perfect. The reason why we do all our DSP on this is because we're putting all our eggs in one basket. If we ever need to, like if this car comes back in a year from now, uh, or they call or they need to tune or something like that, everything is stored under month, day, year, car, color, equipment. Um, so it's just easier to keep them all in one box. <clears throat> but I, I personally, uh, when it comes to the audio control software, I like it better on a Windows machine. It's the exact same software, like they change nothing. It's a clone, they don't do anything different. It looks identical. Uh, the reason why I like running it on the Windows machine is that um, at least the older version, I haven't done the newer version of the software, which is supposedly they fixed this issue. Yeah. Um, they may or may not, because I haven't tested it, is that it would just cause the CPU on the Mac to just go like full tilt boogie and the fans just be kicking it. Um, so, but the fact that they do a Mac version to me is like freaking awesome because yeah, uh, yeah, it's like, uh, why not? Yeah, yeah, you have to. And like, I love the fact that I can download the exact same version of the software onto my phone because I can't tell you how many times I've been in the showroom uh, talking to somebody about the software, uh, either the DMRTA or the, uh, sorry, not the DMRTA, but the DSR1 software, yeah. which only works on a, a portable device. Uh, just be able to open it up and show them the full software and buttons to press and things like that. Yep. Uh, Nanda needs a selfie from the trunk. <laughs> um, I have an Atran ported, however, I need a bigger port. Sounds like good at two ohm with 1000 watts. Okay. Uh, how do you bridge a four channel amp to pure so power, I said, of coaxial speakers in the front? Do you mean bridge or biamp? There's a big right. difference. So you could bridge it by just taking, you know, channel one and two and going to left, channel three and four going to right. You also have to use Y jacks because anytime you bridge an amplifier like that for left and right, you need to run a left RCA into one and two with a Y jack going to both left and right input and a right input going to three and four with a Y jack going to both three and four. Mm -hmm. um, that would be if you want to get maximum power out of the four channel amplifier. If you want to buy amp the speaker, then it's a different story. You run one RCA, one into one, one into two. You use channels one and three 
to power the left speaker and use power channels two and four to power the right speaker. Uh, keep in mind that the amplifier you're using either A has to have a 10 time multiplier switch for the tweeter because your tweeter needs to be crossed over somewhere around 3.2 thousand hertz 3.3200 hertz or 3.2k <laughs> as they say higher or lower that's that's kind of like the generic setting for a tweeter um some play higher like a focal is going to be 5000 or 5k uh so you'd have to have that or you'd have to have some form of external passive crossover on the tweeter uh which there may be one there may be one however keep in mind that when you put a ton of power to them but that that'd be how you do it okay lots of fun there hello yeah. how are you Hi. Um, all right, guys. I think that's, that's it. it for today. This yeah. is the Avalon. It's done. Thanks for tuning in. You Thank guys you. have a great Thursday. Yeah. Uh, tonight is Thursday night. You know what that means, Fernando? Uh, yes. We're going to talk about movies. Reverse uh, reverse polarity mm -hmm. and side mm -hmm. jag are both yeah. on tonight. Reverse polarity is on over the High Five Vega network over on YouTube. Yeah. We'll be talking about some kind of topic about car audio, which is really nice. Now that we've come out with SideJag, which is the movie review channel, uh, so it's SideJag, the channel, mm -hmm. over on uh, YouTube, uh, we don't really talk about movies and TV that much on, on SideJag anymore. So that's kind of cool. Mm. Uh, it's, it's lessened that up. Uh, but make sure you tune it in. Tonight we're going to be talking about the original 20th anniversary of Fast and Furious. And you guys going to talk about the 20th anniversary the, well, or, it is or the, the movie? The movie, they didn't recut it or anything for the 20th anniversary. It's just this is the 20th anniversary of Fast and Furious. Yeah. So we're going to talk about, uh, you know, the thing was is I haven't watched it in probably 10 or 15 years. So going back and watching it, it's like, oh, I forgot about that scene. Oh, I forgot about that scene. Oh, you know, because it, it's just now there's so much Fast and Furious. It just kind of all like soups together. Mm -hmm. So... Uh, it should be an interesting conversation, plus it's like Haifa Vega's favorite movie of all time. Oh, yeah. So that'll be nice to hear his perspective, and I'm going to break his heart. I'm going to tell you right now, I'm going to break his heart. I love it too, but I'm, gonna, I'm still going to have fun with it. Um, all right, guys. Have a great rest of your day. We'll see you tonight. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, I wonder if the fan is loud. What? The fan. The fan there. The door is closed. I think we can turn the air back on now probably a good idea how's everybody doing on this glorious friday you might be thinking wait a minute why is the fan on why is the door closed and why was the air off and why is the front door open fernando what what is going on we're having a party man we ain't having a party yeah uh, we, we were having a nightmare yes <laughs> no it's not too loud Ooh, look at that all right we're gonna get to this so look at that it's a full cal eight inch um, these are, where, where's the box? In the box? Universal. So this is the Focal Universal Fit mm -hmm. 8 inch. Can anybody guess? I mean, I know I've panned by the truck already, but can anyone guess what this is going as by just seeing that panel right there? Hmm. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? What's so there's up? a story behind why we're putting these 8 inch in, which we'll get to. Um, but... The reason why the door was open is there's an Indian restaurant in our plaza and they decided to clean the grease trap. Yes, Johnny, good call. I knew you'd, yeah, look, there he goes. It's a taco for sure. Uh, so they were cleaning the grease trap today and um, well, it was the worst smell. It felt like there was a steaming pile of stuff sitting right there and, and well, we couldn't breathe. So we had to go outside for like 20 minutes. Yeah. So, it felt we like don't 20, have 20 minutes. minutes. I was gonna say it felt that. like 20 minutes. <laughs> All right, so this is in fact the Toyota Tundra, and our favorite speaker to do in this particular vehicle, in this this budget, this system budget, I should say, yes, uh, that we put together, it's getting an 802.5 uh, Kenwood five-channel amplifier. He is getting the Rockford box that's sitting right here. Uh, for those of you that have the Tundra, if you'd like a perfect fit box, this is it. This is the P3. Hang on. Go ahead and shut that. This is the P3 uh, T factory box. I don't know what this guy's honking his horn for. So what's up? Yeah. Hold on. I gotta put the what? No, he's right down there. 
No, it's right there, three doors down. It says five star. No, no, he's, he's right there. You're good. Sorry, guys. The joys of having two locations. Uh, the install base slashes the retail store. Um, okay, so as I was saying, sorry to sag jag there. This would have normally been the plug and play, which is our favorite Toyota. Like it's a whole package we put together where we do the plug and plays, we do uh, radio or no radio, we do integration. <laughs> the problem we ran into is that right now because of covid and shortages and everything that goes associated with that this speaker that they make gone can't get them uh we've been out of them for about a month two months now with no hope in sight of getting a replacement so we needed a focal speaker to go in there at that same basic price point and they make a six by nine integration the problem is so you'll notice this bar right here, okay? There's, there's not a lot of room in that bar. So the six by nine that we grabbed originally was hitting the bar. And which, you know, isn't, isn't that big of a deal because you can see like the factory speaker actually is pretty thick, but it's very shallow. Mm -hmm. So what was happening is if we tried to use the six by nine, the six by nine bracket we would have had to made is gonna be about that thick, which wouldn't have gone in the car because of the, 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 the door panel that has to go over it. The door panel sits right here in this line. So the next plan was what do we have that's gonna give us six by nine sound and performance that'll fit? Yeah. And immediately Fernando goes, hey, what about the eight inch good call so i was like i don't know let's go grab a pair so we grabbed a pair and they fit and all we need is a one inch spacer mm -hmm. which is nice because that gets us actually in shallower than the factory and then what we made was this we have this is one inch thick uh blown pvc and we milled out this whole bracket out of the one inch pvc so it's not two pieces it's just one really thick piece that we made to hold the eight inch. Um, fortunately, the factory is, is wide as an eight inch. So how we constructed that is with um, the factory speaker. We first made this template right here, and this got us our basic factory shape. Then we took these two, spacers here these are laser cut acrylic and this one was the size of our speaker opening and this one was the size of our exterior so we routed this shape out and then we lined this up and we routed out our hole then we put this on top of it and we switched to uh this router bit here this went into this router like so and that bit is going to ride along this piece of plexi and that is going to thin out this here and because we had one inch thick that brought this down to like three eighths of an inch um, or actually half inch that's actually pretty thin i didn't even measure it um which gave us that staggered look and that's how we make those brackets do my audio brackets you made last time i don't have a router wish i did oh i understand Sometimes I wish I had a router connected to a CNC so I could just press a button. So now what we have is a eight inch mm -hmm. and a nice thick rigid basket. Hold it up there real quick before you go away. I just wanna see what it looks like. And that'll mount into place like so. He'll put the fast rings on it and then we'll have a complete fit and we'll have an eight inch in the door. That is great. How fun is that? Yes. Live from Universal Studios. Oh, say hi to Harry Potter. LOL, CNC for life. I know, right? So what I just got finished doing over here is making the tweeter brackets. So these are the tweeter brackets. I'm gonna pull this. So this just has the paper on it. What did I do with the tweeter? 
I have no idea what I did with the tweeter. Do you know what I did with the tweeter? No, I got a tweeter around here somewhere. Ah, here it is. So we have the Focal tweeter for the Universal. It's basically like an access tweeter. And let's see what this does. Mm -hmm. So perfect. I wanted it to fit super tight, which it is super tight. So it's, they don't give you any like back bracing. You see those little teeth right there. Um, I wanted to make sure that it's not going to go into this easily, which it's not. It's not going to just snap right into it or fall out of it. What I'm going to do is take got another tool here somewhere. Hold on. Ah, this. Sorry. I'm going to take this piece right here. This is a little deburring tool, and I will go around the edge of uh, the acrylic this a couple times like this and a couple times on this side and that'll just make that it's a terrible sound i apologize but what that'll do is that'll just make that hole a tad a tad bit bigger it'll, it'll taper it just a little bit and if i just keep doing that slowly but surely get close you got to be careful with acrylic you don't want to just like go gun ho on it because it'll just crack in half and then i'll have to make another one so rock it back and forth ah there we go and there we have it tweeter so tweeter's not going to fall out it's snapped right into place there you go uh, so I'll, I got to peel the paper off now for peeling paper off acrylic the other piece of acrylic that you use like if you buy a wire ruler and you're trying to get the paper off of it just use the other ruler to get the paper off of it because this you can just rub it on here all day long and it's not going to scratch it it's kind of cool um, so I can sit here and I can just I can just do this all day and it's not going to scratch my acrylic I don't recommend doing that. Like, don't test it, but yeah. So, where I was doing that, there's no scratches. So there we go. Now we have one tweeter pod all set and ready to go. Whoa. Didn't twist it too much. The bottom, of course, will fall off. Do that. Get it back in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There we go. All right, so that guy's done. Stop playing with the D. <laughs> hey guys from Iowa, what's going on? What's going on? Uh, if you are gonna do that woofer in the car, make sure you pick up the grill. Uh, Rockford, this is the P3 shallow. It says P3 shallow on the box. You will need that because it is, it, the seat sits right up on top of it. Uh, do you guys have a depth? Glowforge, in-depth Glowforge instruction video. Um, we do have quite a few, like in other videos where we take you through and show you how to use the Glowforge, how to design um, the, uh, the, the stuff that we do. So for example, like how to, how to do this, we walk you through the steps on this and a, and a bunch of videos we've done. Uh, I think we did it in the Avalon video that just came out at some point in that video there was an in-depth walkthrough so like here's the factory speaker and we just use a flatbed scanner this thing right here and we scan that in and we can uh, use some calipers uh, these these guys here buy yourself a nice pair or two or three depending on what it is you're trying to do get a pair of these and you take some strategic measurements off of it so that you can get the scale for your scan right. And then you trace it. And in this case, since this is for a tweeter, all we have to do is just constantly resize this hole. If you look over here on the sides, all these layers are what break up this. So it says tweeter hole here. So I can just launch this. It says Toyota tweeter mount. Uh, the original one was for JLC5. Um, now this one, we've resized it for the Focal, and that's it. 
I like where it has a glow forge free to use. Nice. So if you want to get acrylic for it, um, hang on. Ah, sorry. Sorry. Um, we buy all our acrylic from this guy here on Etsy and he's real reasonably priced. Um, but yeah, we just use those and I just order, you know, obviously a ton of it. So, and then I try to inventory it accordingly. Like some of this stuff, here's a bunch of colors. And the problem with acrylic is everything is usable. So like this, you think, oh, this is garbage, but I can get logos in all these little places. So it, it just becomes one of those things where it's like, oh, you want to throw it away. But then you're also like, oh, I don't want to throw it away. So now I can come over to this, move this over. And this is the piece of, that's in there already. And just try to find like the best place to put it. Now, because this has that five star logo in it, it's gonna print better this way because the logo is longer this way. Um, if, the long, if the logo was longer this way, then I'd wanna rotate it 90 degrees. Um, so that it, it always you always want the logo to print the long way this way if you have a long logo and you're trying to print it like this the laser's got to go to 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 and do all this and it just takes forever um so this guy here i can print this in i think like a minute and 30 seconds or something like that so it'll calculate the time it'll power up and do its thing um for what a Glowforge costs, no matter where you live, I can almost guarantee it's cheaper to go to Clearwater and pay them to do it. <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe. But then you can't do cool, fun stuff. Because they're always fun to, you know, it's fun to have. This is one of the coolest things. I mean, granted, we use it mainly for work. Um, it's still fun to, to play with. All right, so a minute 12. All right, so now if underneath this piece of plastic here, that in case you're wondering why this plastic is on here it's because it's a glass top and there's this shelf and if it falls it'll ruin my day so that'll be done uh dean is a ac acrylic hoarder eh, i wouldn't go that far but i mean it sucks if you don't have the piece for what you need so how are we coming on that speaker over there how are we gonna what with the speaker you got it in no, no? Oh, I got a oh all right I, I was way ahead of you my bad sorry uh, have you done a 2018 Lexus IS350? If so, what's up? Do you know? Uh, yeah, Fernando doesn't remember. He'd be the guy that remember. I'm not a, uh, I'm more of a, oh, when I see it, I know it kind of thing. Not like model numbers of cars, unless it's an F-150. And then I know that one. Uh, I have an 802.5 and an LC7i and my 2013 F-150. Is the LC7i necessary or should I just go straight off the high level in the Kenwood? Yeah, LC7i is not necessary. Um, as you can see, it's the 802.5, which is sitting right here. High level the level is right there. It takes up to 10 volts of input. Um, so no, it is, is not necessary. I mean, you have an LC7i, it is the best high level to low level money can buy. If it's already installed, leave it installed, it's gonna do a better job than this will do. However, it's not totally necessary. Um, the one thing it can do uh, is fix the base roll off that's in there. Fords have a little bit of base roll off, not a lot. But I mean, hold on, this is done. So, I mean, if you got it, you might as well use it because it's not gonna hurt anything to do it. Uh, what you may wanna save up for though, uh, on the F-150, depending on what year it is, is getting the DSR-1. Because you can take a DSR-1 with that non-amplified system that's in there. And if you take the DSR-1 and you take the DFO-2, which are these, this harness right here, DFO-2 harness, DSR-1, you can put these two in and it will reflash the radio to a variable four volt output and because it's a DSR-1, it's gonna give you four pairs of RC outputs, front, rear, sub, and then a, another pair if you wanted to ever go full active. Um, so like if you wanted to take the 802.5 and just move that to tweeter and rear and sub and get like the 404 that they make and put that bridge to a set of the mid base in the door, you could do that with the DSR-1. So something to think about. Hey, Fernando, que tal? What's up? 
Is there a chart formula to convert volts to high level? What do you mean? I don't think I understand the question. Um, you mean what's high level and what's low level kind of thing? Um, no, not really a chart. It's usually plus or minus five volts. So like five volts, depends on the amplifier, but most amplifiers like five volts is where your low level taps out and automatically is gonna, you're gonna need high level after that. Um, so like seven volts is gonna be high level. But it just varies on the piece of equipment you're using. Um, would you recommend a bridge output instead of mono amp for four ohm sub? Probably gonna recommend a bridged output only because there's not a lot of amps that do, like mono amplifiers that do any power at four ohm. Um, so like a bridged output would, so you got one or two choices. Like if you find a sub amplifier that'll do two ohm mono um, and it's like double the power that you'd need, then at four ohms it would be wonderful. If, which would be silly, you could just get a stereo two channel amplifier and go, you know, bridge it two ohm and if it's like the three to five hundred watts that you need you're you're golden there so um the sound digital does do they do the four ohm mono amplifiers two different ones two ohm and four ohm yeah so maybe also check out sound digital uh, because they rate their amp they you buy the amplifier according to what ohm load you need so they might have a mono amp at four ohm that might work for you um mm -hmm. yeah so check that out for sure uh, thanks so much. Yeah, I've already installed it. Um, watched a billion of your videos. Made my own amp board behind the seat. Yeah, so if you've already installed it, leave it in. It's it's a phenomenal high level to low level adapter. There's no reason to take it out. Um, the other option, if you did want to get rid of the LC7i, a plug and play immediate sound better option for you with the LC7i. Like literally, unplug the LC7i. You could plug in this guy right here, the LCQ1, which is an LC7i with six band front, six band rear, five band sub along with AccuBase. This will immediately make your car sound better. Um, LC7i is like 170 bucks. This is like 200 and something-ish. I'm not real sure, but immediately you have now an EQ, make that factory system sound even better like oh wow like night and day kind of things um and this is a like i said basically a plug and play style solution for that if you wanted to there again don't have to but we all know how we're always hunting for the next cool thing air compressors on um uh, hey dean can i lose power from a bad ground even though there is isn't noise yes not everything's going to give you noise i mean noise is isn't usually some of the newer stuff, there is no noise. It's just bad ground. It's not going to give you a warning. Um, think about it like if you step out in front of a school bus, somehow you missed the big yellow thing coming because you weren't paying attention. Well, they didn't warn you. Just you, you're dead now. It's, it's grim. Uh, what is compared to a W7 without breaking the bank? I feel like there's a lot of big super woofers out there now mm -hmm. that you can choose from. I yeah. mean, I, I know like we sell SCAR, we've done the B2 audio. I don't know what the pricing is on Sundown, but I gotta feel like some of that's pretty reasonable. Um, you know, Steve Mead always has a ton of that stuff on there, but um, what's the new one? Hog Audio or whatever it was? I mean, Ground Zero has theirs. So. Yeah, you can get it into ground zero, but I, I, I don't know what the pricing is on it. But yeah, there's a lot of woofers out there that aren't, you know. Uh, you love those audio control EQs. I love EQs in general. I really don't care whose name is on it. Uh, well, there is one I don't particularly like, but we all know that, so we don't have to go down that road. But I feel everyone should have an EQ. I mean, it's, why not? I mean, the whole point of doing this is to make your car sound better. And without an EQ, you're kind of limiting what your possibilities are. I like my Claren EQ. Yeah. I've been all over buying exactly that. See, there you go. How would you feel? How would you feel if car manufacturers started making it easier for installers like you? Like, imagine a car with RC outs already built in behind a panel and a truck, 
and pre-run power cables. I don't necessarily feel the pre-run power cables would be all that great, but being able to have the ability to add a preamp or get a preamp out of a factory radio, I think they'd be doing themselves a big favor, um, mainly because like they would they would just it wouldn't be a headache anymore so a lot of the headaches that they have would be resolved they're not going to do it so we don't have to worry about it but i feel like yes that would be a phenomenal thing for them to do yeah. um just because it'd make everyone's life easier it'd make their life easier because they don't have to worry about people getting there and cutting the harness or breaking the software or or dicking with anything it's just a matter of like here here's the preamp section leave us alone you know we recommend you know don't go any bigger than this that, that kind of stuff but we know they'll never do that because there's lawyers involved and lawyers are in everything uh would you use an rca to tune an lcq i actually yes if you go back um one of the first lcqi videos we did many years ago um we used the uh yes we used the paa threes to because there is no input output RTA for that like there is on, on like a DM 608 uh, to do that so we were looking we show you looking at the signal coming into the LCQ1 and then looking at the signal going out of the LCQ1 so basically our goal for that was to DEQ the factory stereo um, and we did that using two RTAs uh, and then I think in the very end we may have used the RTA just to improve the sound quality of it I don't remember um but yes an rta for the deq would be wonderful most of the time on that you're just trying to fix the electrical side of things and then use it afterward once you fix that then you can go back and see all right well this is what i had to do to get it to where it's pretty flat now you go back and tweak it just a little bit um you don't have to but you can but the one thing i will say about the deq i'm um, sorry about yeah the dq lcq1 sorry the lcq1 is that a little bit goes a long way it's 12 dBs plus or minus on that thing, and uh, that's that's it's not a lot to go crazy. Uh, is 70 hertz too low for high pass on an Exelon XR biampable component? Uh, if we're talking about the seven inch, no, it's not. But it's, you got to really feel what are you getting out of that? Like, is it worth it? Like, is it is it giving you that much more? Um, I would A, B between 70 and 80 and C, is it really an audible difference? Meaning like, oh my God, yeah, that's like, whoa. If it's an audible difference and you're like, yeah, that's really bringing it in because there could be like some phasing things going on at those lower frequencies that are causing that to happen by lowering the crossover point, you're getting around that. Um, then yeah, cool. If not, I would just leave it at 80. But I would A, B them to make sure that 70 is worth it. Uh, what's the best file channel amplifier in your opinion? I don't really have an answer for that because it depends on what you're trying to do. I have plenty of favorites like, you know, this one right here, the 802.5. In my mind, is one of the best little five channel amplifiers you can find. It's cute. It's adorable. It's reasonably priced. It's got decent power to do whatever you want to do. As you can see, it's small. Um, but there again, there's a lot of five channel amplifiers out there. It just depends on what you're trying to do to say, you know, what one is the Mordor of them all? You know, the ring, the one ring to rule them all. I don't know. Um, thoughts on the Nakamichi DSP? We did the how to use it video for them. Um, I would check that out and see if it works for you. Yeah, no. Uh, even one, okay. Nano's machine, workhorse focused. Oh, for sure. Well, somebody's got to work. I mean, actually, I've been spending most of my morning making them parts for the install. So... And I was like, hey, should we go live now? He's like, yeah. So then he's like, because he's got stuff to do, so he's going to look way cooler than me. Right? Always. 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 <laughs> oh, my gosh. All right. Let's turn that off. Um, what's your favorite six and a half component set under 350 to pair with JBL base donut? Uh, I mean... Kenwood makes a really nice set of six and a halves. JBL makes a really nice set of six and a halves. Uh, Morel has the Maximus six and a halves, which we keep talking about all the time because they sound wonderful. Um, so there are there are plenty in that that sub three hundred dollar price range. Has the DSR one gotten any updates? Not, not this year. No, there hasn't been any updates. I don't think we're going to see any updates to the DSR one until it comes back into inventory. 
Right now they are just whatever inventory is out there is all you can get. Um, so I, I don't feel like they're pressuring, pressured to do anything because they know they can't get any parts for it right now. Like most manufacturers, um, 2020, 2022 is not going to be the year to get too excited about new equipment for car audio. There are going to be some manufacturers that are coming out with some cool stuff. Yeah, I'm not going to say that. Just because they're in the pipeline already, and most of them are to the point to where they're almost done. Um, but, like, I, I don't know. I mean, I mean, don't get me wrong. We know there are some really neat things coming out in the next six months. But... You know, it's not going to be the normal cycle that we're used to as far as like, oh my God, that's so awesome. Basing an F-150 with no visible sub possible. There are a couple like eight inch boxes you can get to go behind the back seat. Yes, it is possible. And I think M MTI, MTI Acoustics makes a box to go behind the seat in the F-150. Keep in mind, you're going to have to find a place to put really small amplifiers. So I'd maybe check out like the... Uh, Kicker Key 501 or possibly the Rockford Power Series or possibly the Sound Digital uh, amplifiers. Yeah. Can confirm I love my X802. I don't know. Like, Tommy who? Who's Tommy? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, Evo X. Dude, get an Evo X801 and a 404. Is it a 404? I can never remember. We did the review on those, and like it's like the smallest little yeah. five-channel power ever, um, and yeah. it was so cute and sexy and tiny. 800.1 and yeah, yeah. you could hide those things anywhere because they're like they're like this big, and they're just so much power. Oh my gosh, it's so much power. Uh, <clears throat> what's your mile pace? Done any races lately? Hopefully, start coming back. Um, so I don't particularly do races because I don't have Saturdays off and most of the races are Saturdays. And when it comes to Sunday morning, I don't like doing morning races. I just like, you don't uh, race in the morning? I don't like racing in the morning and Sunday is, is kind of like family day. So I don't do anything. Um, so right now my mile pace is probably, I'd have to check with, it's somewhere in the low eights. Oh, that sucks. I know it used to be in the high sevens, but right now it's in the low eights. Like last night, I was telling you, I, I had a hard time running. Um, I was at, I had, it was like 802. It's like 802, 755. And then I about passed out, so I had to stop. And then my last mile, which was just the, the jog home, which was the last mile, was like an 844. Wow. So um, I got new shoes and I really like them. I don't know what brand they are, but I really like my new shoes. I switched. Uh, so Is that's gonna help with the race. I don't know, man. I really like these shoes, man. They're they're making me fast. Oh really? Oh yeah, man. They're they're some quick shoes, man. People that don't think the shoes make all the difference haven't had a good pair of shoes. Oh probably. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, funny thing on my D four point eight hundred, the fuse are different. Both are forty, but different colors. Yes. Yeah, because um, yeah, we can't get orange to match apparently. Or? Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Thank you. Uh, a lot of companies starting to push the thin subs. Um, I think a lot of companies are just realizing that the truck market is kind of like the winning thing, like the guys with trucks. And so like all the guys that were like, oh my gosh, we didn't make a good shell amount subwoofer. We should probably go back and figure that out. You should. Yeah. All right, let's see. Are you going to try another eight inch option for those trucks? Um, probably not anytime soon. Um, like I said, the, the, the reason why we went with these is because it, it was just by chance. Uh, we're gonna have to hear how they sound and we'll judge our performance from there. If we like them more than we like the plug and plays, obviously this will go into the rotation. Um, mm -hmm. If we like them as much as the plug and plays, well, then it's just a matter of what somebody wants. If they're like, because there's still plenty of guys out there like, I don't want a, a six pound, I don't want a round speaker. And it's like, all right, well, here's an alternative to that. Um, the thing is, is depth. These don't have a lot of depth in the doors. So, you know, it has to be something that is a shallow eight inch. Uh, would you consider the sound digital amps a SQ or just all power? Thanks. Um, we've run the S we've run the sound digitals on some pretty expensive speakers and had great results. 
I don't know if I would sit there and be like, oh my God. I, I, I don't I don't really how to answer that because I know like if you say, oh, they're just power, then immediately they, I was like, oh, well then that means they don't sound good. And they sound fabulous. I mean, they don't sound any different than any other amplifier we've ever tested in the car. Um, I feel like when you go, oh, they make a 3,000, a 4,000, a 10,000, a 20,000, a 30,000, it's like all of a sudden you fall into that category. But I mean, we've ran them with great speakers off of RTA, I'm sorry, DSPs and all that fun stuff and had great results with them. So I, I don't know. It's, it's just an amplifier that makes sound and sounds good, I guess would be the easiest way to look at it like that. Um, you know, maybe something in the future. <laughs> Shh, Tommy, quiet. We've been down that road. That was a fun time. <laughs> Maybe something in the future. Yeah, you know what he's hinting towards. Something in the future. Yeah, yeah. I watched that movie. You watched that movie? Are you talking something in the future or back to the future? No, I want to go to the future. You want to go to the future? Yes, and come back. Okay. He I wants to. You want to go to the future and see what he's talking about? See what he's talking about. Come back and say, guys. You're not going to believe what Sound Digital's doing. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. They're like, going to come out with double hamburgers. You, you can go get a hamburger and fry or hamburger and a Coke for $2.99 down oh the street. Oh my yeah. gosh. Uh, don't tell me what to do, in the words of Ada. Okay. Yeah, that's worked out so well for him. Um, okay, really want those Morel Hybrid 63s. I only have six channel available front and rear. Can I run the mids and tweets passive and the woofer active with some coaxial six by nines in the rear? So basically a five channel type situation. Yeah, why, why wouldn't you? I mean, um, yeah, go for it. It's, it's not gonna hurt anything. All right, well you do, oh, okay. Will you do the mid bass or will you do the tweeter active? Well, he's not giving me the option to go active. He's just can he do the front passive, a set of six by nines and a a uh, sub. I mean, he's got a six channel amp. What he really needs is a mono block so that he can go full active front, rear, front, mid bass, rear, mm -hmm. and then sub. But right now he's only got six channels, so. I mean, basically what you're looking at is a standard five channel configuration with passive crossovers. Yes. You guys have seen us use those Morel passive crossovers enough to know that they're pretty awesome passive crossovers. Like, se sexy ass crossovers. Like, come on. Like, they're the prettiest crossovers. I think they're the prettiest crossovers anybody makes. Yeah. And they sound great too. So, I mean, I don't feel like anyone's gonna do something that pretty and then they're gonna suck. So, although I wouldn't be surprised. Wouldn't be surprised. Ooh, Fernand so Fernando goes to me and goes, hey man, I want this really cool rig for the phone. So when we're at Knowledge Fest, we're not just walking around with a phone like this. Yeah. Yes, you said that. I say that? Yeah, many times. I don't remember. So I found this for the phone. So this is the small rig phone. Don't remember saying that. Rig. Yeah. So it has all the cold shoes on it so we can, I j oh, I ordered the lights too. Oh, the small ones? Yes, nice. I have two of them coming. So nice. it has a microphone mount right there and a spot for two lights on this, and then the phone goes where my hand is. And so you can you can hold it from the top here, and you can yeah. get a nice balanced, and then you can hold it from the two handles. And, of course, you can add things because they have them. So this is the phone rig so that when we are walking around, you know, we don't just look like we're holding a phone in our hand. We can be way overbuilt, way overbuilt. So... And of course, I got another one here. So we got a wood handle mount. We bought so much small rig crap in the last like two weeks. It's ridiculous. So that like we can just have cameras way bigger than they need to be. Um, but he'll feel good about it. That's all that matters. Hey, Dean Fernando, able to get with Paul about my date on the Ben? I, I, I send a picture. Of yes. I, I send it. I day what I had to do. That's it. Yeah. I don't know. He said he's going to call you back. Yep. He did that this morning. So there we go. Yeah. All right. Uh, thin self, also nice since you don't lose your whole trunk in a box. We haven't done a lot of shallow. I mean, actually, I take that back. We have done a lot of shallow mount subwoofers in the trunk because we've done a lot of down firing boxes. Right. Yeah. Plenty. Plenty. 
Yeah, now with Kicker making their oh, downfire. Oh, dude, I wish Kicker would hurry up and make a, an LC, uh, the uh, seven inch downfiring box. That'd be cool. I don't know if they're going to. I'm just assuming they haven't told us one way or the other. So that doesn't affect anything we've done. I mean, we can just assume they are because they've come out with everything else. No one has told us anything, so we don't know. Nobody told us nothing. But that would be cool if they did. All right, guys, listen, we got to get back to work. So what's up, Elias? Elias? What's up, man? Yeah. All right, let's get out of here. You guys have a great rest of your Friday. Enjoy. If you didn't catch the news this morning, make sure you go catch the news. Um, Watch the tweeter, the big tweeter. Oh, yeah. I need a pair of those tweeters, Tommy, Elias. The new tweeters, new Ground Zero tweeters. We need a pair of those. Ooh. Just saying. Big All right, guys. You have a wonderful rest of your day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye. Oh, make sure you go watch SideJag last night. We talked to High Five Egg and I. Go to SideJag.com. Um, who, who won what? You or High Five Egg? Well, High Five Egg won. It's an awesome movie. It's it's Fast and Furious. How bad? I just, you know, I just, the love affair. It is not. It's a love movie. It is 100% love me. If you guys want to know what I'm talking about, head over to SideJag over on YouTube. Watch our chat we did last night on Fast and Furious. It's 20th anniversary. You guys have a great rest of your day. We'll see you. Bye.